Look at those beautiful prototypes. I cannot wait to see them in the showrooms, on the road, and maybe in my driveway. But in order for those cars to make it to production, they're going to have to be much better than uh, the ones that we have right now. That's just how technology works. And somebody has to develop all of that technology and improve all of that technology starting now. So I think my mom was right when she said that it's what's on the inside that really matters, son. So what should we expect inside of those cars of the future? Well, you can't just go to a car show to find out. You have to come to something like this, the 2035 Immobility Taiwan. And this is where you're going to see the technology that is going into our cars in the next few years showcased. These are the companies that got so good at that one thing that they do, or sometimes two or three, that the auto manufacturers essentially trust them to produce that part or the software to put into their cars for the mass production. So let's go and check it out. I'm going to start with Delta Electronics and this company is very unique because they're one of the few companies out there that are actually one of the suppliers for Tesla. That's right. One of their parts is in your Tesla Model Y if you're the owner. As a matter of fact, they manufacture the cooling fans, uh, the fans that cool your seats. And, you know, that is very unique. That means that they're doing something right. And Tesla has recognized that, that now they have a great partnership. But that's not all they do. As a matter of fact, you can probably see there are tons of products behind me. Some of them are for car makers and some of them are straight for us, the consumers. You can probably see the charging stations. Some of them are for cars, some of them for e-bikes and scooters, and some of them are fast charging stations. You know, that technology is the most needed as we've been talking about it over and over again, because the biggest Achilles heel in electric cars is fast charging. And in order for us to charge faster in the next three years, they have to start working on that technology now. Look what I found an electric bus. I am at the master transportation booth. And I got to tell you, these are very important to people like me because I live in a huge city, Bangkok, Thailand, and there are plenty of huge cities like Bangkok that are basically suffocating. The pollution is so high. You literally have to hide at home for a couple of weeks or even three or four weeks a year, which kind of creates a problem because I like breathing and I don't like lung diseases. And so this is the answer, at least the partial answer to, to that huge problem that's, that's probably coming to the city near you. And this particular bus is kind of cool because it's actually designed to go long distance. Now, does it have a humongous battery and can go six, 700 miles on one charge? No, because here's the thing. There are regulations on how far a bus driver can drive without taking a break. And for example, here in Taiwan, uh, it is two hours. So which means in a couple of hours, every bus driver has to, you know, use a bathroom and grab a sandwich. Now, this bus, unlike many other buses, charges very, very fast. So in 20 minutes, which is essentially a quick break, the battery will charge from 20 to 80 percent, where most of the other buses are just charged overnight because they're not being used usually during the night. So I know why we all should drive electric cars. I mean, they're just better in every single way. But um, why would cities uh, and, and counties buy an electric bus rather than a gas or diesel bus? For like diesel buses, they create carbon. So that is bad for the environment. That's one issue. But the second issue is that for the diesel prices right now, it's actually quite high comparing to electric. So at the same time, if you're using electric vehicles for like 12 years of total cost of ownership, it's actually lower, extremely lower comparing to the traditional vehicle. All right, now I am at the Clientron booth and this is my heaven because before being a YouTuber, I was a UX designer. And this is exactly what I used to do because at the end of the day, what matters the most is the user experience for the consumers, which is mainly drivers. And in the last five to 10 years, the experience has absolutely skyrocketed. And I know a lot of us kind of got used to it and yeah, we can connect our phones and the screens are huge and cameras are everywhere. But you know, remember only 10 years ago, we had none of that. So uh, this is one of the companies, one of the, uh, one of the exhibitors here who are supplying their own technology of user experience, screens, the side cameras uh, that, that 
all are going to be cameras and not side mirrors in the future so and these guys are doing both they're doing a hardware and a software and it is not an easy job especially because a lot of car makers as you probably know have their own hardware and software for the user experience and the fact that they have managed to actually have some of the vehicle makers and manufacturers adopt their software and their hardware and those vehicles are on the road right now is quite amazing and you know just on a personal note as a ux designer it is a thankless job you know because the essentially the best user experience for any customer for any product is when the consumer does not notice that you had a job right when everything goes so smooth that they don't even they're not even aware that somebody had to create this experience for them it is usually when uh, the, the things go wrong the button is in the wrong place or something's not working or 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 the wheel is is in, in is is on the way uh, is when we notice that ah oh, somebody did a horrible job doing user experience so this is why vendors like this exist this is why car makers uh, use them because they can actually make the user experience better now what do you think is the most important thing when it comes to developing a user experience for consumers it's um, basically it's idea for them to have an easy access and connectivities. I am at PEWC booth and you probably never heard of this company, but they are going to make your lives much easier in the future. For example, the charging cables. We all want our cars to charge much faster. Well, guess what? For that, you have to pipe more electricity through these cables, which means that you have to cool them down. Otherwise, you're going to burn your hands, your car and entire charging location. Well, this is what companies like this are developing for you. So in the future, we can charge our cars faster. As you can see, this little tubes is exactly what's keeping this cables from exploding in fire. Another thing that this company has developed is the new generation of motors. Yes, motors is a big deal because not only you get more power from them, but also the more efficient they are, the further your car can go. And these are actually on par what Tesla has been developing and pretty much everybody else is developing, moving from one technology, as you can see there's tons and tons of these wires over there, to this technology where these motors are not only lighter, but they're also more efficient, which means that your cars are gonna be more powerful and go further. And lastly, look at this. I, I love playing with toys and, and they have one for me right here. But essentially, this is a mock-up of an existing location of an existing client that they have where they're essentially storing a lot of energy to uh, dispose it, obviously, to uh, whatever electricity needs you have. A lot of times, these are charging stations. This is something that a Tesla supercharger can use, but you can store the energy in lithium-ion batteries that you find in your cars. It has to be different type of batteries that are much safer and uh, can last longer. And you know, people are always, when they get to the charges, they're like, why is it so heavy, you know? But obviously you guys are developing something that's gonna be used in three, four, five years, mm -hmm. which much higher electricity going through it. Why are these cables so heavy? Well, the issue is that we are all impatient in waiting for the batteries to be charged. So naturally we want to increase the power for the charging and that brings up the heat. So what we are developing is using our proprietary technology to reduce the heat of the cable. Okay, I'm now in Shillin Electric booth and these guys also do a lot. As you can see, a lot of going on around me, including the charging stations, the motors, the motors for e-bikes actually, these are pretty cool. And the motors behind me, they've been actually been now on over 200,000 e-bikes that have been sold. As a matter of fact, they've been working with some really major car manufacturers. So uh, currently, what are the uh, big manufacturers that everybody would know about that you guys are already uh, supplying the parts to? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, so big names like Polaris, uh, BMW, KTMs, BRP, and Honda. Now, one of the biggest problems that car makers usually have with the suppliers is when a supplier has a part, or like a motor or a charging station, and that's it. There is just either take it or leave it. But these guys are going beyond that, and they're able to customize their parts for every car maker that wants to use them, which 
is huge. Now, if you take something that looks simple to us, a charging station, it is actually much more complicated than you think, because when a manufacturer makes one, they only make it for a specific region, like Europe, North America, Asia, and so forth. But these guys are able to customize it to very different standards, and therefore, they're able to sell it to different suppliers around the world. And I can't emphasize enough that these suppliers are doing something that a lot of these big car manufacturers are just not able to do because this is something very special. This company has been around for decades, so they really know their craft versus, let's say, a car maker that got into EV manufacturing only several years ago. Well, they have to learn a lot that these guys already know, so therefore those car makers usually go to a, a, a company like Chanel Electric and says, guys, give us your best stuff and they do well i almost got to drive a bus but uh, the security was quick nevertheless i was very excited to see all of this technology that essentially is going to make it to the market for you and me to enjoy let me know in the comment section if there's one thing that you would love for all of them to improve in your car in the next five years other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged